Hey everyone, so the future here, and today we're going to do a little rack update to my tiny little rack. And because I messed up the audio of the first part, we will be doing this in voiceover until after the switch. Um, to change things up and try something a little bit different this time, I am going to make it both a little easier uh, to use the rack, but sacrifice some ergonomics. So uh, my rack is a pretty simple rack. I have two synths in here, an audio interface, a media interface, a patch bay and a special plate that I made in the bottom. And this is to connect my gear to the patch bay through the front of the rack. And I'm going to add a few more parts to that uh, when and if I have the time. And that's this little pedal down here that I just pointed to. So what we're going to do today is we're going to change the power situation of the rack. Right now the power is at the top of the rack and I should be panning up right about now. So yeah, right now the power is at the top of the rack right here at this Inox power strip that has been working pretty well. The only downside is that there's a limited amount of connectors. So I've ended up with a bunch of power strips right next to the rack, which isn't ideal of course. So today we're going to resolve that issue and uh, to solve it, we are going to swap out the power strip of the rack. And for that, I've got this, the T-Rec Power 16X power strip, uh, which we will actually be going to mount in the bottom of the rack. So this is going to sacrifice some ergonomics as the buttons will be at the bottom instead of the top. But realistically, that's not a very big issue anyways, because you only turn the rack on and off when you are entering or exiting the studio and I no longer have to press the power strip on the side. So that's still a win overall. And the inconvenience should be minimal. Uh, I'm not going to time lapse the entire operation because I'll block the view most of the time anyways. So you won't be able to see anything most of the time. So I'm just going to boop us to the rack being changed and then we'll talk a little bit about the experience afterwards. So let me just get the camera back a little bit. There we go. Oh, and don't mind all the stuff on the side right there. That's an issue for another time. Uh, for now, let's focus on the rack. So here we go. All right. And there we go. That was a nice, quick and easy job, right? Took me about an hour, honestly, because I had to move everything around uh, because all the modules had to go up one, which was a bit annoying. And I'm also still very much annoyed by this. Uh, the constant was having two half uh, height units uh, plus one would make a two height unit and that would actually fit in. Um, turns out that's not exactly how racks work. But I guess we learned, <laughs> and that's that's an important thing. So the ergonomics are a little bit eh right now, but I think it's uh, it's an improvement overall. Um, so let me just first show you how it works. We have two switches uh, down, and this is the front and that's the rear. So if I press the rear, you will see the Moto lighting up, and I can turn on the audio interface and the synthesizers. There it goes. So that's my first little button. And the second button, for that I'm going to slightly pan you over so you can actually see it. There we go. That turns on the pedal board. So that's quite convenient, having everything at hand. And there's a small bonus. We now also have just one power strip here, which can actually be replaced because there's only a, a lead to the printer right now and to this absolutely horrendous mess. Because for some reason, every single cable ever produced is always just slightly too short for what you're trying to use it for, which is very annoying. So here's a little look at the after situation. Now, it's not perfect. Um, and part of that is because these adapters are just way freaking huge. So we can only get uh, five in 
So this is my pedal board, two power supplies, one for the top and one for the lower layer. Uh, we have the looper and then we have the hologram and we have one more spot which can actually be used. Uh, and for that I have a five uh, adapter thing so I can potentially hook up to five pedals uh, outside of the pedal board and the interface. Um, for now, that's not entirely going to work because I only have one more in output here on this thing I made. So I might have to double up on that uh, one day, who knows. I also still have one uh, high unit left because the mixer is not being used since I now have a patch bay, it is out of use. Uh, and I kind of want to improve that situation around the patch bay to clear up another uh, high unit. So hopefully I can get two uh, high units back. And with two high units, I might be able to do something like an effect react or something. I was thinking of getting a bigger Motu, um, but sadly uh, Motu is kind of out of development it seems, because their new interface is basically the same thing as my ancient interface, which is very disappointing, but it is what it is. So for shutting down everything, it's uh, quite simply hitting the switch will turn off all the front. And if we just scoot over to the pedal board, there you go. If we press the other button, all the pedals will turn off. So it's quite convenient. Small little update. So far, pretty happy with it. Um, one minor note about this specific power strip is that the plugs are uh, very stiff. They might loosen them up over time, I'm unsure, but it was a bit of a struggle to get them in uh, while the strip was mounted in the rack because I kept pushing the rack forward and it was really awkward <laughs> being behind the rack and having to stop the rack from rolling away, even on the brakes. It, it really took quite a big push to, to get them in. But, I mean, you only do that once anyways, so it's not a deal breaker, just something to keep in mind. Also the side mounted uh, power wire is actually something that can cause you issues. Um, I'll insert a photo of that uh, specific wire, it's, it's right on the side, so it actually runs into your uh, profile on the side of the rack, uh, which can be troublesome. Now because I don't have a unit that is solid above it, this thing is hollow basically, uh, it works out because I can just route the cable up and over and that works. But if you have uh, a rack full of actual units, that's going to cause you some issues. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking into buying this specific power strip. Small update and uh, hopefully it was somewhat entertaining or useful for you. That's it. See ya.